What's good, guys? Last minute predictions, guys, with your boy. Hope you guys are having an amazing day, guys. Without further ado, I'm not going to waste too much of your time, guys. It's going to be a little bit of a faster, shorter video, guys. Let me know if you guys like this last minute predictions, guys. Um, We did. Let's bounce back, guys. Let's bounce back. I'm trying to bounce back from those three units that I lost, guys. Let's get it. Let's break it down, guys. August 24th takes place guys after august 24th guys august 27th is my fucking birthday so let's get it i might take a little hiatus but because there's no fight week so i might just chill for that week but i might drop some content let's get it 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 all right jared Cannonier weighed in at 184 versus kyle brawler who weighed in at 186 kyle all the confidence comes from fighting nerds Kyle's about a half a head taller, maybe 6'3". If you want to really look at it, maybe Jared Cannonier. I don't remember if he has shoes on, but Jared Cannonier is like a good 5'10". So maybe it's going to look a little discrepant when we're inside the cage. Fighting nerds are sweeping through MMA. Huge advantage for Kyle. He looks confident. He's the bigger fighter. Jared is undefeated in the Apex, though. 3-0, undefeated. Kyle Brawler is a minus 250. Jared Cannonier is a plus 198. Kyle by sub or points is minus 135. Kyle by KO or sub is minus 105, guys. In my opinion, guys, you guys know me. I said that this fight doesn't go the distance. I don't think it could go the distance, but we don't want to play that game. We don't want to play too fancy. So what I took is my best prop. Double chance, guys. Kyle by submission or on points, minus 135. Earlier in the week, it was a minus 125, so they put it up to a minus 135, so the bookie's already on it. So jump on it now, guys, as we speak. I want to mention, though, that Jared Kennanier has that power. He's able to make a lot of fights more competitive than they are or expected to be because of his power he could hurt Kyle Brawler early um and he could win a decision so Cannoneer by submission I mean uh Cannoneer by points Jared Cannoneer by KO or on points double chance is a plus 200 and I like that guys if you guys want to look at this fight it speaks a lot for middleweight guys the future of middleweight is here guys i think kyle brawler is able to win this fight guys not only do i think he's able to win this fight but i think he's able to maybe finish it inside the distance if not by submission guys maybe he could get a ko if you want kyle by ko or sub it's minus 105 but i don't like playing that game i like the submission or on points because it's more likely and you don't have to be biting your nails for a finish so give me kyle to finish this fight guys inside the distance by submission i'm gonna go probably I'm going to go third round, but it's going to be hard because a guy like Jared Kennanier is not going to just give up his neck, guys. He's not going to give it up just like Izzy, guys. And Kennanier is here to fight. And every time he's here to fight, he got TKO'd in the fourth round. But you could argue that was an early stoppage, guys. And that was Imamov, who's very fast. Jared Kennanier has a high output. Strikes up to 251 strikes in against Marvin Vittori. Like, a bunch of striking output. If Kyle Barolo gasses... You know Jared Kennanier is going to be a good live bet. I'm going to go Kyle Brawler by sub or on points at a minus 135, guys. I hope you guys like that, guys. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Give me your best props. Let me know how you guys play, too. Next fight, guys. I like this fight. I don't know why, but I like this fight, guys. I've been waiting for this fight, guys. Angela Hill pulls down her pants, too, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. So, Angela Hill, plus 105. Plus 104, actually. She was a favorite earlier in this week. It was almost even. Minus 115 on each side. Tabitha Ricci is a minus 128 now on my bookie, which is FanDuel. Over 2.5 is a minus 600. It's a good parlay piece. We have these ladies stare down, guys. They look really good. You know, she's always flexing her fucking, fucking traps. And she got, she got bigger arms than me, bro. Angela Hill is a demon, though. I like her hair. I like how she did her hair for today. Hill by points is plus 135. Tapa Rishi by points is plus 135. I think the bookie's already on it. Over 2.5 is minus 600. I think this fight goes the distance. That's a if and no buts about it. I think this fight goes the distance. Hill by... Uh, both of them by points is plus 135. So pick your poison. Angie has struggled with her takedown defense earlier in her career. But she's been fight facing a lot of strikers. And Dern wasn't able to submit her. So I don't think she's going to get finished in this fight. But we have to look at the grappling on Richie's side. The grappling will lean towards Richie. Eventually, Angie has to look old and eventually she has to gas. That's just what I'm considering. Maybe she gasses. She has shown that she gas, but right now she's in the best. Angela Hill is the best Angela Hill that we've seen right now. So I think she's going to show up to fight and I think it's going to be a war. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Tabitha Richie struggles to take her down. And when she's able to take her down, she struggles to hold her there because... Tabitha Ricci has good sweeps, good fundamental uh, BJJ. Maybe she could jump into submission, but I can see this fight majority taking place in the striking department. Maybe Angela Hill wins around. The plus 3.5 
is uh, plus money for Tabitha Ricci, even though she's the favorite. So you guys can take that. I like Tabitha Ricci to win by points at a plus 135. I'm going to be taking Tabitha Ricci. I think she's the better fighter. She's younger. And uh, she has good cardio. The only thing is uh, she was holding Tisha Torres against the fence. Arguably, she could have lost that fight. And we could get another sloppy decision where it goes split decision. And Angela Hill probably wins it. But I'm going to be going Tabitha Ricci, guys. I think she's better on the ground. And I think Angela Hill, got, hey, she has to gas at some point. So I'm going to go Baby Sharp. Baby Shark to win this fight, guys. Let's get it. I think she I think she should win this fight, guys, for straw weight. The only thing is Tabitha Ricci is the smaller fighter. So the discrepancy will be apparent in the cage. Smaller cage favors the grappler. We'll see. Tabitha Ricci by points, plus 135. I'll take that gladly at any time. Ryan Loder versus Robert Valentin, guys, for tough. Angel, uh, Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grosso's teammates. Robert is violent. Rob Zilla, guys, by KO, is plus 275. But he's versing a grappler, D1 wrestler. Plus 450 for Ryan Lauder to win by decision. I think that's crazy, bro. Ryan Lauder could definitely win a decision. Not only can he win a decision, he's a little bit taller. And if he gets this fight to the ground, he's a D1 wrestler. He's going to be able to control him. The thing is, though, do you want to sprinkle that? Or do you want to go Rob... By decision or KO at a plus 105. I think that's the best prop in my opinion. Rob by decision or KO at a plus 105. Because Rob not only has he finished his last opponent. But he's a finisher. He has finishes like KOs and submissions on his record guys. He's a guy who screams violence. And he's a guy who needs to fight for a living. Because what else would this guy be doing if he worked anywhere else. Like in a office or something. Loader by sub or points is plus 250. Pick your poison guys with this. I'm going to be going Rob. Robert Valentin to win by KO <clears throat> or decision at a plus 105. I think it's the best. If you want to parlay it with Jacqueline Calvacante, you can. And I think it's good for plus money, guys. I think Robert Valentin should be able to get a KO or if not submission. But I think in February, it's going to be a KO in my opinion. He has gotten submissions before in the past. But um, this is going to be a good scrap, guys. Pay attention to this scrap, guys, because this is a good middleweight bout. I love bouts like this. And every time it's for tough... You know it's going to be a good fight, guys. I got Robert Valentin to win by KO or decision at a plus 105. But uh, Ryan Loader to win by decision at a plus 4, 4, 480, 450. Why wouldn't you take that? Because, bro, if he gets his fight to the ground, he's going to win by decision. I don't think Ryan Loader is going to finish Robert Valentin. So whatever you guys want. I'm going to go Robert Valentin by KO or decision plus 105. Now we have the newly added fight, guys. Khan Offley. Versus Marion Santos, guys. When we look at this fight, plus 154 for Khan, minus 192 for Santos, bro. 145 for Khan. He made it. They both Santos needed the box, though. He it looked like he wasn't gonna make weight, guys. He screamed in relief, guys. He used the box of shame. He screamed in relief when he made weight. He really looked like he didn't believe he was gonna make weight, but I'll pick Santos to win. That's what I wrote in my notes, guys. Santos looked like he was at least one pound or two pounds overweight, but then when he screamed, it's like, yes, like I got away with it. So it's like, Santos, did you really make weight? I'll take him at a minus 192. When you try to look for the best props, guys, it, 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 I don't know, guys. I like the money line for this. I know he's a minus 192, but guys, what else? Like, what else? What else would you take, guys? Like, what else would you take? I mean, you can take maybe inside the distance, but we'll see if it's plus money right now. I have it right here, guys. I have it right here. So, it's right now, they're locked. Everything's locked. So, I don't even know if this fight is still on, guys. It's locked on FanDuel. Like, it's literally locked. There's a lock on it. So, it's it's locked completely. So, I'm going to just take the money line. Minus 192, guys. I didn't do a lot of tape study on this fight because this fight was very short notice. Santos is the uh, better fighter, in my opinion. And I think I'm going to go with him to win by decision, guys. Minus 192, I'll just take him. I'll put him in a parlay with Calvacanti. Because <laughs> Lucanti's my fucking anchor. Let's get it. Santos for the win. Minus 192. Michael Morales versus Neil Magny, guys. It's crazy because Neil Magny's fucking huge, bro. He's taller than Michael Morales, bro. Ecuador, we gotta rep Ecuador strong. My boys from Ecuador, bro. You know these Ecuadorian fighters come to fucking fight. Chido Marlon Vera, all these guys from Ecuador. Big team from MMA there. Not saying that they're all on the same team, but. When they train from MMA and they come from Ecuador, it's the best of the best. It's not just any tin can. Michael Morales versus Neil Magny. Morales is a big favorite. Morales was training with Bilal. I don't like minus 900. I like Michael to win, but is he going to finish, guys? He was sparring with Jake Matthews. Had a little sparring sesh. Morales by sub is 701 plus 700. 
you can take that. Maybe he was training with Bilal. Maybe he throws in a little submission. Maybe he tries to do something. But my best prop for this fight is Morales by points at a minus 105. Minus 900 will look like a joke if this goes to split decision, bro. We know time and time again, maybe the over 2.5 you could take. Double chance. Double chance by KO or on points for Michael Morales is a minus 390. 390, bro. You heard that right. Trains with Bilal. I expect him to strike, though. Maybe he was training with Bilal to uh, Im imitate Leon Edwards. So we'll see. But, um, you know, if you're training with Bilal, I, I take that very high into my consideration. And I think Michael Morales is going to win this fight by decision. So I'll take him to win by decision at a minus 105. But if you guys want him to win by, like, inside, like, let's say Michael Morales to win by KO or submission, right? Plus 135. So it's not bad, bro. It's not bad at all. But I'd like the minus 105. I like the minus 105 for him to win by decision. I think it's more likely. And a guy like Neil Magny is tough, man. He only gets finished by the best. Edmund Shabazian versus Gerald Mearshard, GM3, guys. Edmund Shabazian, holy shit, bro. Edmund Shabazian's a minus 300. Gerald Mearshard's a plus 235, guys. If you guys like both of these fighters, guys, like I do, I was watching JM3, a bunch of submissions, bro. Some of the craziest submissions I've ever seen. Sometimes he's losing the fight, and then he gets submissions. So you can definitely see that there's a lot of first-round finishes for these guys. Their ability is cracking. Last fights, so we've seen him get hurt. We've seen him get cracked. On GM3 side, Edmund round one or early round two. If this gets past the six minute mark, you better look for a live bet. GM3 from the top ropes is a live bet. Edmund's last fight works on grappling, ends up on bottom, but then he nukes the guy. So he was in a weird position in his last fight, Edmund Shabazzian. The guy, but you can't end up on bottom with GM3, bro. GM3 by sub is plus 430. And I like that, bro. I like GM3 by sub. But if we look at Edmund's last fight, guys, his last fight was against um His last fight was against AJ Dobson and he did end up on the ground. If you end up on the ground against Jail Mirsha, he's gonna submit you and he's gonna wrap you up. But Edmund by KO is minus one fifty. Edmund by KO or on points is minus two thirty. Edmund is getting bit better. He hit a reset button on his career. Eventually, he will find his tune and find a KO, in my opinion. So, I'm going to go Edmund by KO at minus 150. But if you like the Edmund by KO or on points, because he can win a decision, he just tends to gas, I'll take the minus 230, guys. But if you want to get fancy, take the minus 150. Give me Edmund Shabazzian to win this fight by KO or on points inside the first or second round. Let's go. Marshall. Francis Marshall versus Dennis Bazooka, guys. When we look at this fight, bro, this fight screams... This fight screams 1-800-GAMBLER, bro, because we don't know too much about these guys, bro. Dennis Bazooka lost his debut. He's a plus 116. Francis Marshall's a minus 142. When we look at this fight, guys, Dennis isn't that good. Might be in the UFC for a... He might not be in the UFC for a long time. Francis Marshall has had a bit of a rocky road in the UFC since his loss to Isaac Dalgurian. Sheen Woodson isn't a good grappler, and he was able to grapple a guy like Dennis Bazooka. Guys like Francis can take him down. Francis, by decision... Let's see what Francis by decision is, guys. Francis Marshall to win by decision. If we go method of victory, Francis Marshall by points is plus 160. Dennis Bazooka by points is plus 240, but we know Dennis Bazooka is the finisher. So Dennis Bazooka by KO or submission is plus 410. Dennis Bazooka by KO or on points is plus 125. I like that one, guys. Earlier this week, I said Dennis Bazooka was going to win this fight, guys. But I'm going to be doing an official pick flip for this fight, guys. I know I said Dennis Bazooka was going to win this fight. But the more and more I look at this fight, guys, I know he trains with Aljo and... I, I shouldn't regret this pick flip, or I hope I don't regret this pick flip, guys. But I think I'm gonna go Francis Marshall to win this fight, guys, at a minus 142. I'm not gonna bet anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do an official pick flip, guys. So let's go Francis Marshall at a minus 142 to win this fight. I think it's a smaller cage, so it's gonna favor the grappler. And I could think a guy like Dennis Bazooka has to KO him. If he doesn't KO him, he's gonna lose by decision. So give me Francis Marshall to win this fight, guys, by decision, guys. I think he should be able to have some success in the grappling and take down Bazooka if he doesn't have a if he doesn't get dropped in the first round. I just think Dennis Bazooka isn't that good as I thought he was, in my opinion. So give me uh, Francis Marshall to win this fight, guys. And he has he has had a little bit of a rocky road since the UFC, so no shame into losing to Isaac Dalgurian. Jose Medina versus Zacharys. He calls him over, guys. This motherfucker doesn't even deserve a contract, bro. What the fuck is he doing here? He looks way better shape, guys. He looks in way better shape. Gets in Zacharys' face. Plus 424, Jose Medina. Uh, minus 600 for Zach Reese. Jose was fighting in the wrong weight class. Wasn't ready to fight on Dana White Contender Series. Zach Reese has had a tough cut. His eyes are sunken. Big dude for the division. Never been out of round one. Medina hit him with the crazy eyes. Jose can take a beating. Probably makes it out the first round. Reese gets over aggressive. Tries to tap people out from the bottom. You don't want to be under Jose Medina, guys. 
you know, sometimes Reese gets a little over aggressive and tries to chase submissions, guys. If you're under a guy like Jose Medina, Medina he's going to finish you and he's going to beat the shit out of you guys. Jose Medina is looking for this fight, guys. And he's looking to make a name for himself in the UFC, guys. I think Jose Medina loses this fight, though. I got Zachary Reese to win this fight, guys. The under 1.5 is a little risky when you look at this fight because Zachary Reese. Zachary Reese, bro, is a minus 600, so do you really want to take it? Under 1.5 is a minus 164, but the over 1.5 is what I like. It's plus money, guys. But the best thing is double chance on FanDuel, guys. Zachary Reese by KO or on points is minus 150. But if you want to go by KO or submission is minus 310 because it's more likely. I think uh, somebody gets finished this fight, guys. This fight for it to not go the distance is uh, minus 600. So might as well take Zachary Reese by KO or submission, guys. Uh, no, no, no. By KO or on... Just take Zachary's money line, bro, because I don't know. I think Jose Medina is going to make it out the first round. I was going to say the best prop for this fight is the over 1.5 because it's plus money. But we got to see, guys. Zachary's is a finisher. Never made it out the first round. So if you guys want to pet the under 1.5, rightfully so. Under or over 1.5, guys. Best thing, guys. I see this girl all the time, guys. I'm going to meet her one day. Let's get it. Let's get it. Zachary's over, over 1.5. Let's get it. I got Zachary's to win that fight. And I think it's going to be a little sloppy fight, so I'm not going to go by a specific way. But if I have to pick, guys, it's going to be by KO or submission, Zachary Reese. Let's go. This motherfucker has tattoos on his face. He's Peruvian versus Slava Claus, bro. James Liontop, plus 172 versus... Oh, versus Borchev, who's a minus 215, bro. This looks like a... He looks like an MS-13 gang member, bro. Advantage, decent height advantage for Liontop, but he has shoes on. His opponent didn't have shoes, Slava Claus. This fight screams violence. If Lion Top isn't shooting for his life and it's a stand-up fight, Slava Claus is so much more experienced. Maybe he can put him out, but Slava is so much better on the feet. You have to hold your breath because of the durability. He will get parlayed with Jacqueline Calvacanti, so I've already made that parlay, guys. Unfortunately, I'm doing an official pick flip, guys. I know Slava Claus has a little bit of a sketchy career. He's, getting, he's gotten dropped by Chase Hooper, but I think uh, Chase Hooper is a very good grappler, and he's very good for uh, what he is in the UFC. So no shame into losing to Chase Hooper. The only thing we have to worry about is durability. I was going on James Lion Top earlier, guys. But um, I don't know if I want to trust a guy with tattoos on it. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Sugar Sean O'Malley is pretty good. But Slava Claus is probably the better striker. I, I thought Lion Top was going to be a little bit of a harder wrestler, but he's not. He's a guy who likes to stand and bang, and he likes to see if he can get a KO. If you guys want the KO, we can look at it right now really quick. James Lion Top. So let's say we go method of victory. Slava Claus by KO is plus 175. So it's more likely for him. James Liontop by KO is plus 360, guys. In my opinion, the double chance for Slava Claus, Borshev by KO on points is minus 200. I think that's better. But if you like James Liontop by KO on points, it's a plus 180. So it's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to be taking Slava Claus to win this fight by unanimous decision. 29-28, 30-27, and 29-28. If not by KO in the third round. Let's go. Two official pick flips, guys. Let's hope I don't regret them. Cavalcanti versus Joe San Nunes, guys. I think you guys already know, guys, what I'm going with. Joe San Nunes versus Cavalcanti. Minus 220 for Cavalcanti. Joe San Nunes is plus 176. Nunes was a very weird shape. Cheekbone, square head, weird body. Cavalcanti has a bunch of hair, way taller, size advantage. Can't see Nunes winning a boring decision. I could definitely see Cavalcanti wrestling her and winning a boring decision. But I think Nunes has to win this fight by KO or submission. I think she has to finish this fight inside the distance. If she doesn't finish this fight inside the distance, she's going to lose a decision. Will this fight go the distance? Yes, at a minus 250, probably the best prop. Over 2.5, minus 300, I don't like that. Double chance, Cavalcanti by KO or on points is a minus 155. But Cavalcanti by submission or on points is a minus 170. That's what she was earlier in this week. So I'll take Cavalcanti by submission or on points at a minus 170, guys. I think she runs right through Jose Nunes, guys. And she should make quick work of her, if not win by decision. Let's go. Zygamontes Ramaska versus Nathan Fletcher. Plus 142 for Zygamontes. Minus 176 for Nathan Fletcher, guys. This guy has staph infection, guys. Staph infection, if I've ever seen it, guys. He takes a fight. He's still here. Nathan Fletcher, 145.5. Uh, Zygamontes, 146. Looks like staph may be healed, but you never know with staph. People with staph sometimes perform like nothing happened. Then BSD's cardio was bad because of staph. Fletcher's staph honestly looks way worse on his arm. 
way, way worse, guys. I'm not going to get fancy with the props in this fight, guys. I'm going to just take Nathan Fletcher, guys, to win this fight at a minus 176. I think this is way too risky for this fight. I'm not even going to be touching this fight. I don't like betting on a guy who's a favor, who has staph infection, guys. BSD was a favor, had staph infection, lost. We know a lot of people have had staph infection and have won. But Nathan Fletcher, guys, it looks like he's taking this fight because he needs to, not because he has to. So we got to pay attention and be careful with this fight. Screams violence. I'm going to go Nathan Fletcher to win this fight by decision 29-28, 30-27, uh, 29-28 on all judges scorecards. Let's get it. Be careful with the Zygamontis dude, though. He's making his UFC debut, so he might come in for everything. He might come for the head, bro. Then the last fight, guys, Kong Wang, the Joker. Versus Victoria Leonardo. You know, I like it when people do this stuff. Anderson Silva did something like this with the white mask. I like it, bro. Do something different. Do something so I remember in six years. Oh, I remember when she painted her face. Oh, yeah. So it's something cool. Quang or Kong Wang is a minus 1,300, 1,300. Victoria is a plus 730. Leonardo, she's been finished time and time again, guys. We have to wonder if her chin is questionable. Where is she at? Wong making her debut. Victoria has lost to Natalia Silva by KO a year and three months ago. Her last win was Mandy Baum. Lost to Melissa Gatto by Dr. Stoppage. Manafara head kick KO'd. Her KO is live. Wang by KO is plus 110. Under 2.5 is minus 154. Wang by KO or on points is minus 330. Victoria by decision. Small cage favors the grappler. Victoria by points is plus 3, 1300. I don't think nobody's going to fucking jump on that. Wang by decision is plus 210. If Victoria's chin isn't gone it can hit and she could win by decision pick your poison i'm gonna be going this fight doesn't go the distance under 2.5 at a minus 154 and i'm gonna go wang by ko on points at a minus 330 give me wang at a minus 330 with ko on points cavacanti by submission or on points at a minus 170 michael morales just money line and then give me fucking kyle Borallo. that's plus money already guys that's a great four leg guys and Kang Wang to win this fight, guys, and start off the prelims with a great finish, guys. Let me know what you guys think, guys. This was the UFC last-minute predictions, guys. Hope you guys fucking enjoyed it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's make some fucking money. Let's get it.